Hey everyone, it's Rob with Passport to the Parks and today is Monday, August the 26th and I'm here at Epcot. Why? Well, because everybody knows that D23 was yesterday and we got a huge announcement about all the stuff that's coming to Epcot, all the changes, um, some things about uh, some of the attractions that we've already known, uh, just some updates with those things, some new announcements. So I'm going to walk through and I have my uh, information all from Disney here and we're gonna read about each attraction where it's gonna be um, what we think about it and we're all just gonna have some fun just kind of hanging out uh, looks like we got a few people coming on right now Austin welcome uh, menu Rager welcome I'll wait uh, for some more people to come on here usually they jump, they jump on pretty quick here for me but uh, definitely uh, subscribe here on YouTube if you haven't done so make sure you hit that bell icon and also, uh, go to PassportToTheParks.com, all kinds of cool stuff happening over there. Uh, the Star Wars trailer came out uh, this morning, and it is absolutely amazing, a complete shocker, so hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, let me turn you around here real quick, and again, we'll wait for some more people to come on, and then we'll, we'll get going. We'll start chatting about everything that's happening here. I've got a beautiful shot right now. I'm just, I'm just sitting, just sort of enjoying uh, the entrance to Epcot with Spaceship Earth. Obviously, we have the changes already taking place up front here where they've taken down the uh, Legends wall and, or the Leave a Legacy wall, I'm sorry, and now they're working on the other side. They're taking down the, the pillars that were over there. I guess from the concept art and some of the things they showed uh, at D23, the whole entrance is going to be revamped here, and it looks like they're going to have these, these tall sort of glass um, spires or pillars or something up front maybe i'm mistaken about that but that's that's one of the concept art pictures that i saw so hopefully um that'll look really great i think overall epcot is going to look really beautiful it's been, it's going to become a, a very uh pleasing to the eye park it's going to be something that you're going to enjoy walking through the sort of world showcase is going to encompass the entire park with just its beauty so i'm really excited about that um, a lot of the things i did enjoy some things i was a little disappointed in you know, I'm sure everybody has their, their ups and downs. Uh, I was surprised that they didn't announce a few things. We'll kind of talk about those as we go along. Jared, welcome. Alex, welcome. Richard Scott, welcome. Janet, Whitney, good to have you here. Uh, Scott, hey, just watching the uh, 23 Review. Love, uh, love that, love, uh, you know, love that I had it. Awesome, thank you. Mr. Cruz Fever, Angela, Kurt, Scott, uh, Shannon, welcome. Good morning. Uh, yes, it's pronounced the city Houston. Okay, I didn't know if it was Huston or Houston. I'm sorry about that. Chuck, welcome. Bill. Uh, okay, so like I said, I have the information here, most of it uh, from the Disney Parks blog. And I'll just read a little bit, just sort of the intro, what the blog had to say. It said, Walt Disney once said, uh, Epcot would always be in a state of becoming. It's a place that changes with the times. Over the next several years, the Walt Disney World Resort theme park will live up to that promise in a whole new way as it continues the biggest transformation of any park in Disney history. That's pretty cool. Bringing the next generation of immersive storytelling to life through a plethora of new attractions and experiences. Now, a lot of the attractions I think we already knew about. There wasn't like a big kick in the pants attraction that I got out of D23. Uh, Whitney, great view of Spaceship Earth. You can't go wrong anywhere with Spaceship Earth. It's just, it's amazing. As long as it's in frame, you're gonna have a beautiful shot here. Uh, you know, I thought they were going to announce a country. I really thought Brazil was going to get announced. Uh, I really thought they were going to announce something maybe with Journey into Imagination, uh, which they didn't. So no big attraction announcement, just a lot of updates and a lot of names and things for the current attractions here. And we'll, we'll get to that as we go along. Uh, it says, Sunday at D23 Expo 2019, Disney Parks Experiences and Products Chairman Bob Chapek, joined by Zach Ridley of Walt Disney Imagineering and other special guests, made several exciting announcements about the future of the park. Uh, Epcot will be united with four neighborhoods that each speak to important aspects of the world. This is kind of cool. I actually like how they're kind of separating it into different categories, which you can learn about the world that we live in. Uh, let's see, you can learn about the aspects of the world and its people. World showcase, world celebration, world nature, and world discovery. These neighborhoods will be filled with new experiences rooted in authenticity and innovation that take you to new destinations where the real is made fantastic in a celebration of curiosity, hands-on wonder, and the magic of possibility. Now that paragraph alone gets me excited. Whether or not they'll pull it off and they'll make it uh, amazing is another thing. Like I said, it's gonna be beautiful. 
Will it be the, the Epcot of everyone's vision and dreams of Walt's dream? Uh, that will have to be, we'll have to wait and see. It looks like they're bringing a lot of IPs into the, into the park, which I'm not a huge fan of, but it depends on how they use those IPs uh, as we move forward. That's where everything sort of comes into play. Okay, let me, uh, let me get a few more people here, then we'll get on our way. Sherry Awesome Sunsets Travel, welcome. Martin, good to have you here. Tim, good morning. Uh, let's see, did I miss anybody? Scott, my daughters are looking forward to Moana being there. I agree. Uh, the less characters in, uh, in Epcot. Yeah, I, I just wish they would bring in more discovery and more things. You know, World of Motion Horizons, you guys know my story that I love that stuff. Um, I, I know what you have to sort of bring these characters in. I mean, they're so popular and you can relate them into different scenarios in here, which is cool. You know, I heard that Moana is not gonna be, it's not gonna be a Moana attraction. It's gonna be more of the, the water sort of based on Moana and that relationship with water and everything. So I do like that. Rob, hey, from the UK, coming on the 30th of November, awesome. Michael, welcome, BP Buckets. <clears throat> George, good morning. Matthew Kind, awesome to have you here, my friend. Okay, so I was actually enjoying my, uh, my little seat there in a nice little shaded area, but we're gonna, we're gonna start making our way around here. You can see the Guardians of the Galaxy there in the distance. Let me zoom in just a little bit. So a lot of progress there. The building is all enclosed. They talked uh, a little bit about the Guardians of the Galaxy. Once we get over there, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more in depth about that. Everybody's getting their pictures up front. You can see where the, the Leave a Legacy towers were. So this is all going to, to change. And again, from what I saw, they're gonna have these beautiful glass sort of uh, spires or pillars that's gonna be coming up in front here. Maybe something similar to what you see in front of Spaceship Earth with the, the queue for Spaceship Earth. So I kind of like that. I kind of like the, the feeling that you're going to get when you walk into Spaceship Earth as far as what the concept art looks like. So the first thing that we're going to come to is Spaceship Earth, and this is going to be part of the World Celebration. So the, the, first, uh, the first area would be World Celebration, and this offers new experiences that connect us to one another and the world around us. It says the iconic spaceship Earth will remain a voyage through time as the journey transforms to reflect the power of storytelling to unite the human experience. New narration and entirely new musical score will focus on moments and ideas that define our story. You will follow a magical story light that brings the entire experience to life in dynamic ways giving each scene energy and the beauty that ties the entire journey together. Hello, how are you? Good morning. How are you? Great. Thank you for all your time. Oh, thank you so much. I'm live right now. Can I, can I put you on? Or do you sure, mind? why not? All right. Hey, guys. Hi. Awesome. Thank you for watching. I appreciate that. Where are you from? Rhode Island. Rhode Island. Awesome. Did you just get here? Or? No, uh, we got here on Friday night. We're here until tomorrow. Awesome. Yeah. Have an awesome time. We followed the whole uh, uh, Skyliner progress. Yeah, there you go. Skyliner. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> We'll be back in the winter. Awesome. Open. Very cool. Yeah, because we'll leave before, yeah, obviously it doesn't open until what, September? Uh, September 29th, yeah. so yeah. Just doing a walk through everything they announced yesterday with D23, yeah, so yeah. just kind of going through and Twitter. telling everybody about it. So, cool. well, I'll check awesome. that one out when we get Thank home. you. Appreciate you watching. Right. Have yeah. a great time. Yeah. Thank you. Right over there. Okay, so, uh, so World Celebration is going to basically be everything behind Spaceship Earth. So we knew the, uh, the fountain is going to be going and that's where the new Moana attraction is gonna go. So we'll walk back this way. We'll take a look and we'll talk a little bit about what's gonna go there. And then we'll make our way around. Uh, we'll probably head to, I'm not sure, maybe World Discovery after that. Now this is all Spaceship Earth. And uh, this is the, the queue right now. It looks like they're gonna redesign the queue for Spaceship Earth a little bit, and they're gonna redesign the exit. So I don't know if I missed it, but I didn't get a lot of what's gonna go on with the innovations buildings. I don't know if they're gonna do anything with those buildings, if it's gonna become part of the Spaceship Earth experience, or I'm not really sure. I didn't get a whole lot of, out of D23. Um, maybe you guys did. This is a, a huge queue for Spaceship Earth. What is going on? Usually I come in here and the queue is not this long for Spaceship Earth, so. Hey, Gary from North Carolina, thank you for being here. 
make our way through the crowd a little bit and we'll get behind Spaceship Earth and we'll talk about what's going to go on back here. Matthew, yeah, Spaceship Earth has a line. I'm surprised about that. I guess everybody's excited. Now they want to ride it before the changes actually come. I'm an old school Spaceship Earth. Uh, I love Jeremy Irons when he, uh, when he narrated it. And I love the music that went along with Jeremy Irons. Uh, so, you know, the changes that will come with Spaceship Earth, I don't know if it's gonna, I'm sure it'll enhance it. You know, they're gonna use new technologies and stuff, which is what Epcot's all about. I'm all for that. Hey, how are you? I'm well. I'm a frequent viewer of your channel. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Wonderful. You're welcome. Thank you. Have a great day. But like I said, I love old school, and you know, Spaceship Earth just has that old, that old time Disney feel to it, and that's sort of the last one of the last attractions that really had that feel. So we'll have to see what those changes uh, entail once once that happens. An updated ending will be very cool. Bill, 50 minutes for, uh, for Spaceship Earth. Yeah, that's, that's really crazy. Jack, Sandy, Claus, Logan, I saw Greg at Disneyland. Yes, Greg is at Disneyland having a great time. Appreciate his coverage. He's doing live streams out there, so definitely check him out. He's uh, Expedition Greg. Really awesome guy, so. Definitely, uh, definitely check him out. Okay, so this is all gonna become world celebration back here. And again, I'm not sure about interventions, what they're exactly gonna do with these buildings. But the fountain's gonna go, and this is where the, uh, the new Moana attraction is gonna come. Um, I don't think it's listed in here. Yeah, they didn't talk much about it in this article. But I think it's called the Journey of Water or something like that. And it's going to be interactive as you walk through. It's going to be uh, interacting with water, pretty much how Moana does in the, uh, in the animated feature. But Moana is supposedly not going to be so featured through this. It's just going to be the interaction with water itself. So this should go back towards World Showcase. Uh, they're also going to put what they're calling a new pavilion. Uh, this will be a perfect place for live events and the home base for Epcot Signature Festivals. It will provide a stunning elevated view of the entire park and an ideal spot to witness Epcot's nighttime spectacular. This beautiful three-level structure will have one of the most remarkable architectural designs in any Disney park, featuring a plaza level, a middle expo level, and a park that sits high, or I'm sorry, in the sky on the top level. So all the way at the top, it's gonna be like a park. It'll be, you know, something like this up at the top of this, uh, this structure. And you're gonna be able to watch the, the new fireworks show, which is really cool. Uh, Epcot's entrance plaza will be transformed. Uh, oh, we didn't talk about this. Epcot's <laughs> entrance plaza will be transformed with new experiences that will connect us with the world, welcoming you with reimagined fountain, uh, new pathways and a sweeping green spaces with, uh, to beautify the entryway. The design will pay homage to the origins of Epcot. Okay, then I love that. That's exactly what I was hoping that they were gonna do. Uh, as you exit Spaceship Earth, you will discover a breathtaking view of World Showcase from Dreamers Point. World Celebration will also feature the new statues celebrating the legacy of the original dreamer, Walt Disney, plus beautiful natural environments and global design elements filled with Disney magic and surprises, including a wishing tree in an enchanted forest and a story fountain uh, celebrating the power and music of iconic Disney storytelling. That, I think, out of everything that came out of D23, I think that is my favorite piece of information. As you come out, probably right in this area here where the pin trading is, you are going to have a gorgeous statue of Walt Disney. They showed the statue. He's basically kind of sitting there just sort of gazing out over Epcot just realizing his dream and everything that he had envisioned, I think is absolutely beautiful. Walt Disney is my, my one-time true hero in life, and I just cannot wait to see that statue. I love the partner statue, obviously at the Magic Kingdom. I actually have that statue in my office. 
uh, and this new Walt Disney statue looks like it's going to be beautiful and amazing, so cannot wait for that. So as far as this new pavilion, I'm not 100% sure where that's going to go. I'm not sure if it's going to go back here beyond the Moana attraction. Uh, I don't believe it's going to be part of the, I don't believe it's going to be the Odyssey. The Odyssey is going to become um, more of the festival event center, which it already is. But I don't think they're going to turn that building into this new, this new pavilion that they're talking about. I'm assuming it's going to be somewhere back in this center area, which I don't know if that'll take away from some of the views of Spaceship Earth, you know, once you get back into uh, World Showcase. So I'm not 100% sure about that. BP buckets, the whole spine will be closed pretty much. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. How they are gonna redo this is gonna be very interesting because obviously this is the main you know, hallway that gets you through back from, from Future World into World Showcase. So if they close all this down, you know, you're know, you gonna have a lot of traffic getting redirected uh, on both sides and we'll, we'll have to see how they deal with this. There's so much that's gonna be going on through here. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how Disney deals with all those changes and how they're gonna deal with the construction. All right, so moving on, we're gonna to head to, uh, my papers are blowing around here a little bit. Let me grab some more comments here before we get too, uh, too far in. Uh, let's see, Newsfan77, I don't think he envisioned uh, what they are planning. Remember the Progress City. Yeah, obviously it's not Progress City. Um, you know, Epcot became what it is. It's, they, they went with more of the principles and the ideas that Walt had as far as what he wanted to envision for that future city. Um, it was always gonna be in a state of becoming a city that could, that could change the world. And that's what Epcot basically is. And that's, you know, that's why it's so close to my heart that I want them to stay with that because it was Walt's original vision that this is supposed to be things that help us change the world, technologies that we can use to make the world a better place. And, you know, some of the properties that they're bringing in you know, it's sort of straying away from that. I, I understand, I love the interaction with the water, with the Moana attraction. The Guardians, you know, they kind of tie in with the planetarium, you know, in, in the beginning. We'll talk a little bit about that. You know, a lot of the nature stuff and all that. But, you know, it, it doesn't uh, tell how the progress of man, you know, could, could be a better place and different technologies, how man could use those throughout the world. So we'll have to see as it goes on what they're gonna do. Dawn from Canada, welcome. That crazy guy, the concept art has a new pavilion just inside the monorail track. Oh, so the new pavilion is actually going to be up front. Or, oh, inside the monorail, so inside here. Uh, I'll have to take a look because I'm, I'm not 100% sure. It's, I think it's definitely going to be back here. So if you're going to get the views of uh, World Showcase, obviously it's going to have to be back here somewhere. Matthew, the statue is something I love. Uh, close enough to sit down uh, next to it, humanizes the man. Yeah, that's what I love too. I think it's, when I saw that statue, I'm like, wow, what a, just a beautiful, beautiful statue of Walt Disney. It just makes him exactly who he was. He was a genius, but he was. It, more than anything, he was a father, he was a man. You know, he had his own things that he loved. He loved his trains and he just loved to, to tinker and invent things. And you're right, it, it humanizes him. And I love that, I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna talk about that with this statue. That's exactly what it does. You know, the Walt and Mickey statue, it, it does sort of, you know, make him more of an icon. It makes him, you know, the, the creator of Mickey Mouse, the creator of all this, this legendary things that he has here. But, you know, as he sits there and he just kind of, uh, you know, I don't want to use Thanos as a, as a reference to Walt Disney, but, you know, after Thanos did the snap and he went back and he just sat down and he just sort of, you know, reveled in the, uh, the things that he accomplished or he, he set out what he accomplished to do, you know, that, that kind of reminds me of that Walt statue too. It's just Walt kind of sitting there thinking, you know, hey, I, I finally did it. You know, my plans have finally come uh, come full circle and I can just be proud of it. So that's awesome. Albin, thank you so much. $5 Super Chat. I was just wondering uh, if you retired. I uh, love your videos and love the live streams. No, I have not retired, I promise. Uh, like I said, just going through a lot of things with uh, trying to purchase a house and Cammy just started back up to school. So, you know, a lot of life things coming up. I've been trying to get some videos up, doing some videos from the office and stuff just to, uh, to stay in touch with everybody. Okay, so let me, uh, I gotta flip my papers around here. It's kind of hard to do one-handed. I'm gonna use a trash can over here so I can set this down real quick. 
All right, let's see here. This is what I'm trying to deal with. All right, we're going to go to uh, World Discovery now. <coughs> Excuse me. AJC Magic TV, welcome, welcome, welcome. See, Matthew, uh, Moana is also the pathway to the seas, the trail of water uh, to the sea works. Yeah, I mean, they can, there's all kinds of stuff they can do with it. I'm, I'm not disappointed in that Moana attraction at all. And I love Moana. I don't mind seeing her here. I just, I hope, uh, I love the interaction with the water. I think that's the, the key to making, making it work here. Okay. So in world discovery, so this is where we discover everything, you know, about what's beyond, I guess, things in space, the play pavilion, um, world of, world of motion. See, I wanted to call it world of motion, but it's a uh, test track. So this is how we discover things in life and things that could uh, possibly be in the future. Uh, in world discovery, stories about science, technology, and intergalactic adventure come to life. Intergalactic adventure. Okay, Guardians of the Galaxy, Cosmic Rewind. Not a huge fan of the name, but uh, it fits. It fits with Guardians of the Galaxy. I, I totally get uh, what they're trying to do there. Uh, this will be the first other world showcase pavilion at Epcot. I'm gonna try to get out of the sun here so I'm not standing directly in the sun. The adventure starts in the, Galac the Galaxrium a planetarium-like exhibition that explores the similarities and mysteries of the formation of Earth's galaxy and Xandar. Uh, you will be invited to learn more about the treasures Xandar has to share until the moment when the Guardians of the Galaxy arrive and adventures across the cosmos ensue. The attraction will feature a new innovation from Walt Disney Imagineering, a storytelling coaster that rotates 360 degrees to focus your attention on the action, including the first ever reverse launch on a Disney coaster. So, I mean, all in all, it sounds cool. And again, I wish I was a coaster enthusiast. I wish I would ride coasters because it just sounds awesome. You know, I love how they're incorporating the storytelling. It's very Disney. It sounds very Disney, the entire attraction. Um, I'll probably go through the queue just to see the planetarium and then I'll be, you know, the chicken that exits before you get on the ride. So, you know, you'll see me coming back through the line with my head down because I'm a big chicken to ride, but I definitely want to see the planetarium. That sounds really cool. Let's see, Raymond, uh, I think the tremendous amount of success that they have with the Frozen attraction uh, that's uh, decided to put more characters and rides in Epcot. I mean, you're absolutely right. There's no, there's no doubt about it that why they're putting the IPs into Epcot, it's because it's a draw. I mean, people really love them. I love them. I'm not saying that I don't like them. Uh, I just think it's it's just straying away from what Epcot, you know, really, really is. And I think if they can incorporate the two and it's not overwhelming, uh, Frozen Ever After is very overwhelming. It's all Frozen. You know, it, you know, they went from Maelstrom, which was completely about Norway, uh, to Frozen, which is just, you know, basically riding through the entire you know, animated feature, which is great. It's a beautiful ride, but you know, should it be at Epcot versus the Magic Kingdom? You know, that's that's something to be said. Um, but this is going to be great. The, the concept art shows the uh, the new uh, entryway here, which I think is going to look really cool. It does look very futuristic, very Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, okay, so to the right here, the old Wonders of Life Pavilion. Uh, let's see, we have. The Play Pavilion will open in time for the 50th anniversary of Walt Disney World. In this digital metropolis, you'll discover an interactive city bursting with games, activities, and experiences that connect you with friends, family, and beloved Disney characters, both real and virtual. Like never before, as a part of this new pavilion, you'll have the chance to help uh, legendary fashion icon Edna Mode on her quest, hang on, the wind is blowing my paper here, sorry, on her quest to rid the world of uninspired style or make a splash uh, competing in a water balloon fight hosted by Huey, Dewey, Louie, and Webby. Now that I'm in love with. You bring Huey, Dewey, and Louie in here, some classic old school stuff, and I'm all for that. Hang on, I gotta switch my plans here again. I guess that's, uh, okay, that's it for that. But that's gonna be the play pavilion. You know, not a whole lot that came out of there. Again, just some concept art. Uh, it's still just called the Play Pavilion. 
So really more than anything, we learned there's gonna be a planetarium here, Guardians of the Galaxy uh, Cosmic Rewind, and the Play Pavilion is gonna have some interactive attractions that, again, we sort of already knew was gonna happen. I'm actually gonna grab a picture or two here. Let me get my lens cap off. It's always fun to decide which one my, uh, my thumbnail is gonna to be towards the end. I am glad to see that they're bringing the Wonders of Life Pavilion back, you know, from non-existence. This was one of my favorite attractions back in the day as well. I actually loved Body Wars. It was an extremely rough ride and not a whole lot of people really enjoyed riding it, but I, I really loved it. I love those kind of attractions, the, the simulator attractions. See, Lori, a lot of changes coming to Epcot. I'm not as excited to see the original stuff go. Uh, but open to change. Thank you for showing us. See you on September for the Skyliner ride. Absolutely, that is very, very cool. September 29th, I'm gonna have, uh, I'm gonna be riding the Skyliner uh, two o'clock over at Hollywood Studios. I'm gonna be there. So if you wanna show up to ride and just have a great time, please do so. It'll be a, uh, an awesome time. I already got some people ready to show up. Not a whole lot of Skyliner stuff. They just basically gave a nod to the Skyliner nothing about a phase two so we'll see maybe they're just waiting to see if it's going to be a success or not which i assume it's going to be a uh, a major upgrade for transportation for disney so hopefully we'll get a phase two sometime in the near future not a whole lot with mission space but next to mission space we have the new space restaurant and we're going to walk back there real quick i am not the fastest walker in the world so i wish i had a segway this these live streams would go a whole lot smoother with a segway but not that i've ever ridden one it'd be a great live video in itself to watch me try to ride that thing be like paul blart probably fall off and kill myself but it'd make for good entertainment right uh, no changes with test track Obviously, Test Track is what it is. They've already done uh, an enhancement on this years ago. It's a great ride. Do I miss World of Motion? Absolutely, but uh, Test Track, I really think is great. And again, it really fits into the, to what Epcot is. So here is our space restaurant. And now this is actually going to connect to Mission Space. So you can see there's a, uh, sort of goes back here and it connects into the Mission Space building. So I don't know if they're gonna have maybe a gift shop area or something interactive as you, as you come out of Mission Space. You can go into the restaurant or at least the lobby of the restaurant. We'll see how that interacts, if it's gonna be one you know, full experience. Obviously you're going into space with, space with Mission Space and then you're coming here. So it gets pretty loud over here, so bear with me. Uh, an expansion of the Mission Space Pavilion, uh, the new restaurant, Space 220, will be a culinary experience featured, uh, featuring the celestial parano <coughs> panorama, I'm sorry, celestial panorama of a space station, including daytime and nighttime views of Earth from two, that thing's going, it's really loud over here, uh, views from Earth from 220 miles up. That is beautiful. They actually showed concept art with that as well. And it looks like this, this space elevator and you can see Earth you know, below you as you're rising up. It's gonna be really incredible. You'll board a special uh, elevator for a journey to space, to a space station that is home to an incredible dining experience. Along the way, uh, viewports will give you a real time perspective as you, as you travel high above the planet. Once you arrive, you'll enjoy fantastic meals and drinks while taking in views that are truly out of this world. Opening this winter, Space 220 will be operated uh, by the Patina Restaurant Group, which I know uh, they do uh, uh, the Italian restaurant. Um, it was a Via Napoli, something like that. And uh, one other restaurant, I think another Italian restaurant over in Disney Springs, I forget the name of it. But yeah, this is gonna be the restaurant. You can see the curvature of the building. That's obviously gonna be where the, uh, the 360 view is gonna be of space. And I'm really, really excited about this. Great, great addition. 
and that that really does work with Mission Space. I think it's uh, an awesome idea. You're going to get a great new restaurant in here, some great food, and probably one of the most entertaining experiences uh, for a Disney restaurant that you're probably going to find anywhere. And it's going to open this uh, this winter, so very awesome. That crazy guy, Space 220, to open in the winter uh, could mean 2020. It's hard to seeing it being done before then. Uh, they actually said this winter, I believe. Uh, they said this winter at, at the D23 announcement, so. Follow the Bradley's Fun. I am at Epcot right now. I'm over by the uh, by test track. I'm gonna be heading back across over to, actually, how are we gonna do this? We'll, we'll try to do this the smart way. We're gonna head back towards World Showcase. We'll talk about everything through there, and then we'll hit uh, Disney Nature on the way out. Man, it is really loud over here. The test track line is really long. Looking at, uh, let's see, single rider time is 15 minutes. And was it 85 minutes for the uh, standby line? Just make my way through here. 85 minutes. Now this is understandable. That Spaceship Earth line was really, really out of the ordinary. And when I came in here, there was not a whole lot of cars in the parking lot. I didn't think it was gonna be busy, which it doesn't seem to be. As I'm walking through, there's not a whole lot of people, uh, obviously because they're all standing in lines right now, I guess. So let's make our way back around the countries. Uh, some different things announced through the countries. Uh, nothing huge. We did not get the a new country, which we all thought was gonna happen. We thought it might be Brazil, but that did not happen. So curious to see if that will happen sometime in the future. AJC Magic, uh, yeah, probably will be pricey, that restaurant. Go ahead. Okay, I'll let you squeeze around there. I know that she probably deals with a lot of people, but this is just insane because ain't nobody talking, nobody talks to anybody. And I and Jerry Ford. Yeah, Chris Hardy, 220 miles above the earth. That's why it's uh, Space 220 is the name and it's gonna be very awesome. One of my favorite things that they've uh, they've done here at Epcot by far. Epcot Europe, thank you so much, 549 Super Chat. Very much appreciated, thank you, thank you, thank you. So yeah, they have the uh, the Odyssey building and you know what, let me get, uh, let me get to my last page here. Let me find something to set this down. Sorry, I know this is uh, not the most professional thing in the world, but you guys can bear with me a little bit. Okay, so, hang on one more second. I'm gonna wipe my brow here because I'm getting a little warm. So we can move on. Walking around live streaming, for some reason, just makes you sweat. But it's a lot of fun, so we're gonna keep going. So this Odyssey Pavilion, uh, you'll be able to visualize these exciting plans for Epcot when the doors open October 1st, 2019 for the Walt Disney Imagineering Presents the Epcot Experience in the Odyssey Events Pavilion. You'll discover engaging and interactive exhibits that showcase the relentless innovation, energy, and excitement driving the park's future throughout this unprecedented period of transformation. So they are gonna use the Odyssey Center to basically give us an entire glimpse of everything that's gonna happen here at Epcot, which is a great idea. See, Pete here, uh, greetings from Cedar Point. Just got off the condos, that's awesome. You're on the old Von, Von Roll. Yeah, those uh, Cedar Point, that's my old stomping ground. That's where I grew up. I'll have to let uh, Robbie Von Roll know that you rode the, uh, rode his gondolas there, so that's awesome. So we'll see a lot of changes you know, all through this whole area back here, this the Moana attraction is going to come, you know, through the um, the World Celebration area is what they're going to call it. Not sure how far back it's actually going to go. Um, 
and I'm not sure exactly where this new pavilion is going to go. You know, they have all this fenced off over here. So maybe this is going to be some of the area that that pavilion is going to be built as far as the, the three tier pavilion. This would be a pretty good spot for it. And it wouldn't interfere so much with your, your view of Spaceship Earth. That crazy guy, am I excited for Harmonious? I, yes, I think so. They played some of the music from it and it sounded really nice. We'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that once we get back to World Showcase. Tony, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Follow the Bradley's fun. I'm at Soren right now. I can meet up after the ride. Yeah, let me know when you get off. Um, I'm actually gonna head around World Showcase right now and then I'm gonna make my way to that side of Epcot, which will be Disney Nature, or the World Nature. I'm sorry, I, went, I keep saying Disney Nature for the films. So that's where we'll end up at the end and we'll talk about what's going on over there as well. But enjoy Soren. Absolutely a gorgeous ride. So this is the Odyssey. Again, they're going to use this October 1st of this year and they're going to have the uh, Imagineering Presents the Epcot Experience. So everything, all the changes that's going to happen with Epcot, we're going to see inside the Odyssey. Hopefully we'll see uh, some nice models, some better concept art, maybe some some visual visualization with uh, some videos. You know, Disney loves to, to put together nice videos. See, Brian, on the concept art, the Moana attraction is between the seas and the land pavilions, uh, more or less on the site of the Innovations West building. So am I looking at that uh, incorrectly? I thought it was gonna be right behind Spaceship Earth where the, uh, where the fountain is right now. That's where I was assuming that it was gonna be. But you're saying it's gonna be more over between the land and Nemo, which there's not a whole lot of space over there. I'm not sure why it would go over there. I really thought it was gonna be in the world, in the world showcase, in the world celebration area. I have to take a better look at that concept art. PT are going to be there all week. Check out Six Flags as well. Let's see who else we got going on here. Walter, I heard Brazil is still coming, but they didn't announce it the weekend because of the horrible forest fires they had during the week. Yeah, uh, somebody else has said that too. The, the stuff that's going on in Brazil, they may have just held, have held back because of that, which that makes a lot of sense. Uh, you know, there's been so much talk of the country and Brazil just makes, uh, makes perfect sense. I and mean, they have so many visitors from Brazil that come here. So it would be a, uh, be a wonderful tribute uh, to that country. And it would be beautiful too. I mean, there's so many beautiful things in Brazil that they can incorporate in a, in a country here. Let me change over to my uh, World Showcase paper here so we can talk about what's going on. Got to use my trusty garbage can again. Let's see, World Discovery, World Celebration. That's everything. That's what it's all gonna look like there. World Celebration, Discovery, World Nature, and World Showcase, obviously. So we're gonna look at World Showcase now, and we'll make our way around. Okay, let's go do this. Uh, they also say, said more shade at Epcot as well. So that'll be really nice because, man, this Florida sun can really, really be brutal on you sometimes. So obviously they're gonna put a whole lot of uh, new trees, a lot of new greenery up front. It's gonna be really pretty. So that's where all the, uh, the shade is gonna come in. It's gonna be really great to, uh, to experience and to see. Uh, it smells really good through here. You can smell the water. There's a few fountains. If you've been here, you know that smell. You know the uh, smell of Disney water. Oh, 
Edward Buckner in next week's breeze to finally grab the musician's guitar and he strums it with all his might. Suddenly he finds himself crossing into the land of the dead. A magical world where no living person had ever been. And it was here in the land of the dead where a charming trip to the Exor made me The land of the dead, maybe a little cocoa experience there. All right, so the first thing we're going to come up here to, nothing really happening with, uh, with Norway, which is my heritage, by the way. Obviously, we have Frozen Ever After in here. And is it, uh, I believe it's Hong Kong is getting the new Frozen land with that new uh, uh, Wandering Aikens uh, coaster that they're going to have through there that looks really cool. The sleds. The first major attraction uh, that they announced, or sort of just a, a change here, in the China Pavilion called Wondrous China will take guests on a spectacular journey across the country, filmed and presented completely in seamless 360 degree digital format. So they're gonna get a brand new 360 film through here, which should be absolutely beautiful. I mean, seeing the Great Wall of China, And anytime you can get, uh, you know, new footage, new digital technology in any of these shows back here, definitely take the time to go through and see them. I mean, you can learn so much in these, uh, these movies that Disney puts back here, and they're always beautiful. I mean, I've always seen them, you know, ever since back in the 80s when they started doing this. I remember seeing these movies. Canada obviously has a great one. There's going to be updates over there as well. But yeah, this, uh, this is going to have the new Wondrous China 360. Not a lot of major changes going on for any of the countries back here. Obviously, well, France, I take that back because France does have some things and uh, United Kingdom. But as far as the countries over on this side, not a whole lot of big changes. We're still gonna make our way around. Hey, Nemo with glasses, welcome. Matthew, never seen Norway. Sorry I didn't go through it, just trying to, to get around and get all this, uh, this information in today. So, ah, oh, this girl just got attacked by a butterfly. <laughs> Those Disney butterflies, man, they could be very dangerous. You gotta watch out. Live? I'm live. Hello, folks. How are you guys? Hello, folks. Having a good time? Yeah. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Talking about all the awesome changes coming to Epcot. Oh, can't wait. Yeah, a lot of cool stuff. Here, I'll give you my card. You can see yourself. There you go. Well, check it out. Awesome. You see yourself later. Yeah, on YouTube right now. Yes, stop. All right, so in 2020, following the limited run of Epcot Forever, the new Harmonious, and they have Harmony and then Us is capitalized, the U.S. So it's going to be about us. It's going to be about all the people of the world, I guess, will debut the largest nighttime spectacular ever created for a Disney park. It will celebrate how the music of Disney inspires people all over the world, carrying you away harmoniously on a stream of familiar Disney tunes reinterpreted by a diverse group of artists from around the globe. Harmony Us will feature massive floating set pieces custom-built LED panels, choreographed moving fountains, lights, pyrotechnics, lasers, and more. So obviously it sounds amazing. Faster! 
A little bit of Germany fun back here. So Illuminations. September 30th will be the last showing of Illuminations. It's going to be a very, very sad day. It's a wonderful, wonderful show. And then we're going to have Epcot Forever for two years, which kind of strange that they called it Epcot Forever and it's only going to be here two years. I think that's the running joke right now. And then in 2020, we will get... Uh, uh, did I say two years? Okay, in 2020. So it's not gonna be two years. I thought it was two years. So next year we're gonna get Harmonious. So Forever's just gonna sort of be this uh, this little placemat that they're gonna lay down until they can really get Harmonious up and running. <coughs> Sometimes I gotta pay attention to what I actually read. It's good exercise to come walk around World Showcase. So I find a little shady spot, I'll get into some comments here real quick, so we can keep chatting along. Yeah. Let me uh, grab one of these tables here real quick. Get a pretty view of uh, World Showcase. Just give me one second here. All right, had to readjust myself there for a second. So let's see, Epcot Scott, uh, are you using a mic app, uh, have a new mic or maybe a new phone? There's some definite reverb in your voice. It sounds really like uh, you are in a room and not outside. Um, not sure, it's the same mic I've always been using. Hopefully there's no major problems with it. Uh, Larry, saw my last illuminations on August 16th. At least you got to see it. It's gonna be a madhouse here on the, uh, on the 30th for sure. See, Lewis, the travel, uh, Rob, please can I get some, uh, some monorail action and some of the Skyliner station. Uh, we'll check out the Skyliner station as we head around towards International Gateway, and uh, we'll see the monorail when we get around as well. Carrie, I remember the first time we went to Epcot was March of 83, and they had signs up in a couple stations of World Showcase for countries that were coming soon, Russia and Africa. Wish I had uh, pictures of them. Yeah, Africa, I remember when Africa was gonna be uh, coming as well. And then they just kind of really just made it into a little kind of kiosk over there. So I'm not sure what they did with that. Um, you know, not that it would ever happen because it's, it's, you know, not real. But I think Wakanda would be an amazing addition to Epcot because Wakanda stands for everything that Epcot does. It's all about technology. It's about what can be done to make the world a better place. It's about sharing technology with the world, which they you know, eventually did in the movie. But Wakanda would be amazing at Epcot. I wish they would do that. And of course, uh, is it Disneyland that's getting with the, the Avengers Campus, where you're actually gonna travel to Wakanda. Uh, so that's very cool. Jamie, I sound fine to you. All right, sounds good, thank you so much. Uh, nope, no problem, it just sounds more focused than normal, okay. Austin, uh, if you think Brazil will come to World Showcase, uh, do you think it would come with uh, uh, with an LP? Not, oh, with an IP. Uh, I would hope not. You know, again, the, the countries are really not based around IPs. Obviously, they pulled Frozen and they pulled Remy into, you know, they can have an attraction in there based on an IP, but, you know, the whole, the whole showcase itself, the whole country should be based on the natural beauty of the country itself. So we'll have to see what they do with that. I still would love to see mountain ranges back here. Back in the original plans, you know, they, they had originally envisioned mountain ranges. Like a, uh, in Japan, they were gonna do, I think it was Mount Fuji, I, I think that's Japan. 
Uh, they were going to get the um, like a bobsled mountain in Germany. So they had these great ideas for these mountains back here. And I just don't know why that ever, uh, that never happened. I don't know if it was just a, a land issue that they had, but I wish they would have done that over, you know, bringing the Guardians of the Galaxy in. You know, adding some thrill rides back here would have been great in the form of mountains. But it is what it is. And, you know, the, the planetarium, the ride technology sounds like it's gonna be great for Guardians. So just coming through Italy now. Yeah, the Via Napoli is uh, the same uh, restaurant group that's doing the Space 220. So it looks like they're out there cleaning up the World Showcase Lagoon right now. Just kind of picking up some of the seaweed and stuff that forms out there. So it'll be interesting to, to see how this is going to change, this whole site. You know, the Guardians building, really, you can't really tell that it's there right now. It's, it's very hidden from this angle, at least. You know, they have that sky blue and it does blend in. I was not happy about this building at all. But, you know, the further I see it here, it really does blend in. It's not taking away from my overall enjoyment of the park. Uh, Spaceship Earth is always a gorgeous view. I'm wondering what this, uh, this three-tier pavilion where it will be and what it'll look like. I'm thinking it's probably going to be more towards the right over here. So it won't be on in a direct path of Spaceship Earth, at least I hope not. Got the new uh, barbecue restaurant that's going to be coming to the American Pavilion. No mention of that at D23. Got the Eat to the Beat concert series, gonna be starting August 29th. Plain White Tees will kick that off. Some of the most fun times you will have, especially at uh, the International Food and Wine Festival is coming to these concerts. I mean, they have some extraordinary acts that come through here. Resort budgeting, 499 Super Chat. Sorry if I missed this earlier. Uh, thank you, Rob. Hope I can make it down in September. I uh, got to try the budget, uh, try to fit it in the budget, of course, absolutely, yeah. It's, plus things are gradually getting more and more expensive through here, so definitely got to come to Disney with a budget. There's a squirrel running across the, the street there with some kind of a food in its mouth. Squirrels got to love the buffet that they get here at Disney. <laughs> what has he got in his mouth? What's he got? He's got a big old, like a seed almost. Oh yeah, it, it looks like, like a like pine artichoke. cone or something. Yeah, an artichoke. It's an artichoke, right? Kind of looks like it. I think it is. He's buried. Don't look at him. I want to look at him. I'm going to watch <laughs> he him. He did. He just totally he buried that thing. Look at him. Too bad the horticulturist comes through here and dig it all up for him. Hopefully he'll eat it before then. That is so right. cute. Oh, look, a baby gecko. Look at teeny tiny. Yeah, little baby geckos in here too. Up. Oh. Hey, hey, we don't see it. <laughs> We're not going to steal it. We're not looking. He's like, mine, 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 mine. Mine, mine, mine. <laughs> oh, that is hilarious. That's great. Three. Only in Disney. Live? Yeah. I'm Deb Troy and Deborah. Troy and Deborah. How are you? <laughs> nice to meet you. Very, world. very. Welcome to the world. Yes, it's beautiful. Let me give you my card here. You can. Please do. Yeah, That's great. what I said I need to do is get my card. There you go. You got it. Awesome, Happy awesome. Passport to the parks, that's me. That is great. Yeah. Love the Skyliner, so follow everything with the Skyliner. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow, this is great. Just walking through, uh, talking about all the changes that are coming now for Epcot. Did you hear about the wait time for Star Wars? We talked to a guy yesterday that works at Disney. For the... He's an Uber driver and a Lyft driver, but he works. Yeah. Anyway, 
10 hour wait time is what they expect. Oh Thursday, yeah, I'm sure. Thursday. For Friday, Thursday, Friday. Yeah, it's going to be crazy. They're going to do uh, uh, drinks and snacks for everybody online. Yeah. They're going to do games. They They're going to have to. They're going to have to have water and stuff out there for everybody. Let's hope it actually pays off because I, I hope they get those kind of crowds because they deserve it. But I did you guys get in to the pass holder preview? No, no, we tried. I thought they would do a soft opening where like none of the rides would be open for people. Or yeah. People. But you would look at the sculptures. Yeah. No, there was a big line of people. Right. You were not getting past that. We, we, we did the uh, the pass holder preview and it's it is absolutely we had stunning that inside. Last night was like more the, the oak. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. They did it for that and the golden oak. Shares. Yeah, it's it's amazing inside. It's definitely worth going. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's beautiful. Well, enjoy your day. You too. Have a great time. Good luck. Bye bye guys. Bye. What's the name of your channel? You guys do YouTube, you said? We do. What's your channel? Troy and Deborah. Troy and Deborah. Troy yeah. Deborah. All right, look for Troy and Deborah on YouTube. Thank you. All right, coming through Japan, obviously we have the, the very famous drummers that we can hear. All right, now we're gonna be coming up on uh, Morocco and then finally France. And France is where some new things are obviously gonna be taking place. A lot of cool stuff happening in France. Let's see here. I was in the sun, so it's hard to see the screen. See, Lewis, hi, Rob. When I come on the holiday on September 30th to October 14th, I'm going to ride and film the ride of the Skyliner in Hollywood Studios to Epcot. Uh, we need to uh, change at all. Will you need to change it all? Uh, let's see, from... You want to go from Hollywood Studios to Epcot? Yes, you will go from Hollywood Studios to the Caribbean Beach. You'll transfer at Caribbean Beach to the Epcot line, and then you can go all the way through. You'll go through the Riviera, which is a transfer through, and then you'll be able to uh, uh, head on into Epcot. Leanne, good morning. Follow the Bradley's Fun, gonna see me in France. Awesome, I will walk uh, slowly over there so we can meet each other. Larry, do you think all of the uh, torches around World Showcase Lagoon will be removed or incorporated into the new shows? That is a very good question. These torches right here, will they remain or will they go? This is a big part of Illuminations. Will it be a big part of Harmonious? Um, I would hate to see them go because they are absolutely gorgeous when they all light up around World Showcase. So I hope they do not go. Give me one more second here. I'm going to just get really hot walking through here in the sun. But yeah, that, I did not think about that. What kind of elements might stay? Are there going to be any changes to the uh, to the islands out there? <coughs> That's another good question. You know, they have the uh, the islands out in the center of World Showcase. Are those going to stay? Are those going to go? Are they going to become incorporated somehow? Susan, the fountain in France is one of my favorite pictures uh, with your sister. Very, very cool. Hey, it's Lance. You love the torches. Yeah, I love the torches too. I, I really hope that they don't remove them. You know, they don't have to be a part of the show, but I would still love them to see them light up, you know, after the show. You know, once everybody's exiting the park, to have them lit up, I think is uh, really beautiful when they do that. Uh, Susan, I'm so jazzed to see Cherry Tree Lane. Cherry Tree Lane, yeah, that's, uh, that's going to be a great addition over there. Jeremy, have you heard any more news about the Skyliner or soft openings? Uh, let's see, Larry, off to a meeting. Have a great day. Thank you for being here, Larry. Jeremy, um, the 28th was the day that I was given as far as uh, Doppelmeyer kind of turning over the keys to Disney. There's been a few heads spotted on the uh, Skyliner gondolas, you know, in very random situations. But as far as a full soft opening or full cast member testing, that has not happened yet. I am thinking that it's going to happen on the 28th or sometime after the 28th of August. So I will definitely be uh, tuning in to see if that is actually the case. Whether or not it will be actual guest soft openings, I'm sure they will start with cast members. You know, they'll get the system running. 
They'll get the cast members trained. Um, you know, in order to train, you're going to have to do. So you're going to have to use people. So they'll probably start putting cast members on here. You're down to a month. So, you know, they have the uniforms now or the, the costumes, I'm sorry. So you're going to have to start getting bodies out there. You're going to have to get the cast members trained in order to, to get this up and running within a month. And there's a lot of things. I mean, there's a lot of safety issues that cast members are going to have to know. It's a very, very safe system, but you're going to have to know that system inside and out. You, you want your cast members to know, you know, how all the parts work, what they do, what they're for. You know, the signs of, you know, things that could occur, how to deal with people, how to load them, how to load the scooters. So there's a lot that they're going to have to go through. But yeah, after the 28th, that was, <clears throat> sorry, something in my throat here. <coughs> oh, man. I'm going to get a drink of water. <coughs> Hopefully there's a drinking fountain over here. I don't think there is. Nope. <coughs> All right, sorry about this, guys. My throat is completely drying up on me here. That's what you get for talking for so long. <coughs> I'm sorry about coughing in the microphone there, guys. Hey, it's Lance. Got to go back to work. Uh, you're welcome for the stream. Thank you for being here, my friend. Okay, so now we're coming up on France. And we already know that the Ratatouille building is behind these trees. Very hard to see. It's all painted in green. How are you? Hey, what's up, Rob? How are you? Follow the Bradleys. Awesome. Fun. Now, are you, you're the Bradleys? The last name is the Bradleys, last I assume? Bradley, all right, yeah, what's your so. name? Ron. Ron, cool. Ron, yeah, we met over at uh, Grand Destino when you were. Oh yeah, okay. I do. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, Sorry yeah. about that. I meet so many people, it's hard to I know. keep faces going. You know. <laughs> <laughs> have you eaten at Toledo yet? No, I've not eaten there. I've. Uh, we had some uh, down in the lounge. We ate up in uh, the upper lounge, the da the Dahlia. Dahlia lounge, but have not eaten in uh, the Toledo yet. Cool. It's supposed to be amazing. It's. Fun to serve there. It's fun to serve. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you getting the you getting the crowds that you expected coming through there? Yeah. Some yeah. days I mean some days are really busy. Um, uh, when you're making your reservation online, you just choose dinner and okay. automatically select seven o'clock or later. But dinner's open from five o'clock, so I like to let people know that. Oh, so if you can they get... want a reservation, it's always easy to get before seven o'clock. Okay. So there's a good tip from five to seven at uh, the Toledo. It's easy to get a reservation. So. Yeah. You can see all of Disney World from up there. Oh, I know the views. About the the views view. are absolutely <laughs> stunning. I love it so much. Yeah, I'm just talking about everything that's coming to, to Epcot here, so. I know we got so, so many new announcements. I'm excited yeah. about the new. I actually like, a lot of people didn't like the direction that they were going with the future world, but yeah. I really like it because technology updates so quickly now right. that it makes far more sense to, you have the discovery area, which they can do that technology in, but it makes a lot more sense to have the, the world discovery world. Right. Nature. I, I do like how they separate it a little bit into different yeah. areas where you can learn. And I think um, it's going to be a really pretty entrance. Oh, it's going to be. I, I do agree with that. I think the entrance is going to be gorgeous. Um, I, the Moana attraction I'm okay with as long as they don't plaster Moana all over it. It's yeah. more the interaction with water. I just don't like all the IPs coming in. I like, I like Epcot for what it is. It's supposed to be, you know, the vision of tomorrow and the technologies and things like that. But it's definitely gonna be beautiful. It'll it'll be worth coming here to see. Always evolving. I was just getting off the sore and my thought was, oh, they're gonna have to change the end of this now. Oh yeah, because that's right. All you see is the front yeah. entry plan. Oh yeah, I didn't think about that. They got the new completely different. That's right. The new yeah, so. the Soren video at the end. Wow, good call. Yeah. <laughs> I bet you yeah, they didn't think about that. That that can't be cheap to change either. They're gonna keep that for a while. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure they will. So wow, yeah. But it's been uh it's been really cool. I, I, I heard that they brought Soren over California back to California for a time or something. Uh, that I'm not sure. So I would I would love it if they would bring Soren over California back for a period of time, like two week stint, special right. pass holder or whatever. Yeah, that would be cool. Who are? Yep. So yeah, I'm just going to talk about uh, what's coming in here now. Uh, yeah, the retro two ride. Yeah. Gondolas. Been reading all the stuff from the vlog here, so. I can tell you, I personally haven't heard anything yet about cast member testing uh, for Skylines. For the Skylines? Really nothing? They got a month. Yeah, so um, 
I'm, I'm really if I thinking. Get something, I'll let you know. Yeah, I appreciate that. After the 28th, it's supposed to. Doppelmeyer, from what I hear, is turning over the keys to Disney, so yeah. Disney can do whatever they want. And I mean, they, they have to start testing I'll it. Tell I mean, you. Uh, go, just go up to Toledo to, to look at it. Yeah. The view of the Skyliner. System I know. I've seen it. Yeah. Incredible. You can see all the all the angles of it too. Down. Yeah, uh, I love like down when, Buena Vista. When I'm watching it and it's going. Yeah. From up there, which I'm lucky enough to get to do like four days a week. <laughs> um, it's really cool just because you can see all of the parts moving and you see the entire line right. coming out of Hollywood Studios, going over to Epcot from Riviera and everything. It's, yeah, it's, it's cool. pretty cool. It's awesome. Really cool, so. Good to see you. All right, man. Follow, follow the Bradleys fun. Check them out. Yeah, I got to put more stuff on. <laughs> yeah. Hey, go for it. All right. Have a great time. Yeah, thanks. All right, guys. Uh, so we are in France now. Some major changes coming to France. Uh, let me see where I'm at here. Okay, in summer 2020, the France Pavilion will offer even more for you to discover, including the much anticipated attraction Remy's Ratatouille Adventure, where you'll shrink to the size of Chef Remy and race through Gaston's restaurant on a wild adventure. Summer 2020 will also see the debut of a delicious new restaurant in the France Pavilion, Le Creperie de Paris, offering both table and quick service options featuring a menu from celebrity chef Jerome Bacchus. Hopefully I said that right. I probably butchered that. Now here's a, here's a big one that got announced. Also in the France Pavilion, the classic uh, Impressions de France film will be joined by the new Beauty and the Beast sing-along debuting in January of 2020 and directed by Don Hahn, producer of both the animated and live action versions of the tale as old as time. So France is gonna have a lot of stuff going on through here. The entrance is actually gonna be for Remy's adventure. It's gonna be over here across the way. So this is all gonna change through here. You can see where it's already fenced off. I'm not sure if they're gonna relocate uh, Princess Aurora, but you can see the fencing. They're widening the pathway that goes in back of all the France Pavilion here. And then Remy is back there, as well as the uh, the new crepe restaurant is back there as well. So we're going to walk over here. We'll get a view of International Gateway. We'll see some of the Skyliner station as well. All new entrance is coming to uh, International Gateway. They're making all kinds of expansions over here because obviously you're going to have so much uh, of a traffic increase as you're coming through. So you can see they're expanding all of the new entryway over here. Uh, the Skyliner obviously just looking beautiful. You can see they're making the new entryway for the Skyliner. It's not currently running right now, but the station is, uh, is pretty well complete. I mean, just again, the little details that they're finishing up. And then finally, we're gonna start getting bodies on board. So a lot of positive things happening back here. Going to have huge volumes exiting, you know, after after illuminations and what will be harmonious. You know, you're going to have a massive exodus back here. So the Skyliner, all of the Epcot resorts, uh, the the Friendship boats, everything will be back in International Gateway. All right, um, Michael B. And that's uh, supposed to be the start of the Festival of the Arts. Uh, I think I'm. Missing some comments here. Let me try to get back a little bit. You guys have been talking amongst yourself, which is always nice. Disneyland brought the original Soren back. Okay, he's already gone, but hopefully he'll watch us. We'll get word to him. Reedy Creek uh, Jemer. I love seeing, uh, let's see, the shots from the air during early years. No Caribbean Beach Resort, Epcot. Center uh, looked like the the middle of the wilderness, looking south. Yeah, I love old uh, old school Disney as well. I'm with you on that. Maria, I'm so excited to see the changes that are coming to Epcot. What does IP mean? It basically means uh, characters. Uh, when they're bringing in uh, intellectual properties, is what that means. It, it means that they're bringing in the Disney characters. Uh, 
Uh, Matthew, hey, I thought I heard something about new friendship boats coming as well. Uh, I have not heard anything uh, about that, so follow the Bradley's Fun. I'm not far. <laughs> Somebody said that they uh, they did bring back the the Soren to uh, to Disneyland. There he is, up on the bridge. <laughs> so we're going to head towards the United Kingdom now. We'll talk about another one of my... Uh... <laughs> we're talking about you. <laughs> one of my favorite things that's coming, uh, Mary Poppins, and absolutely a beloved film. They're going to incorporate uh, Mary Poppins Returns as well through here. Uh, if you guys follow... Uh, Jack from DSNY, he's had, uh, you know, some coverage on this as well. Some thoughts and ideas about Cherry Tree Lane. We'll kind of talk a little bit once we get back in there. So it'll make a little bit more sense. My question is, how did they get the building to blend into the sky that well? You know, I, I was so mad about that building when they first started building it. And now it really does. I mean, you can barely, I mean, when you really look, it's there. But just in an overall glance, I think they get, did a good job of blending it. I don't know, the colorization is like, it, it's weird. It's almost like an It is weird, yeah. It is weird. That's what we're looking at. You see the, the Guardians building over there where you can barely see it. Did you notice that the gondolas started to move for like a minute and then stopped? Yeah, they'll do that. They're, they could be testing anything inside the track or little increments and stuff. They move it. It may not even have anything to do with here. It could be something on any of the sheaves or at the other stations. Or It'll be fun to watch this park evolve. Oh, absolutely. You got your, well, I Hang saw on, you I gotta show this Star real quick. Wars. Yeah, yeah, that was awesome. Oh man, how many times did you get to do Smuggler Run? Hang on one second. This is the uh, the new Crepes restaurant, and then Ratatouille is going to be just uh, into the left as well. Uh, Smuggler's Run, I just did it once, yeah. and it was so much fun. I was really going in there expecting not to like everything. For some reason, I just had a bad feeling about it. I got a bad feeling about That's this. <laughs> but then I got it as soon as I walked in. I'm like, oh man, it just hit me in the face. It was yeah. so amazing. My wife, who doesn't really like Star Wars, loved it. Yeah, like, same. My wife and my daughter too. They're they're like, ah, we don't like Star Wars. I drag them to the films and all that. And I mean, it's just it's so encompassing and it's so amazing. And the Smuggler's Run is just fun. It's just, just a lot of fun. It's busy with the interactions, but that was really fun to yeah. me because like I got to help. Chewbacca, you know, work on stuff. Yeah. Like this, like this tools for him. I had a whole conversation with Ray oh, at, at yeah. night. I mean, we just talked about Jakku and everything. It was very cool. I'm going to head back here to into yeah, France or into the United it. Kingdom. Have fun. All right, man. I'll see I'm sure we'll run into you again. Yep. <laughs> Sorry, getting on our Star Wars rant here, but uh, genuinely had a great time at, uh, at Galaxy's Edge. So that was a lot of fun. If you guys didn't see my videos, especially the Smuggler's Run video, I am like genuinely just having a grand time inside that ride. It's a lot of fun. And it's totally like a kid, you know, getting into the Millennium Falcon. Okay. So as you can see, it's really not that busy here right now because, you know, there's not much to do back here. But that's all going to change because, uh, where'd we go here? My papers got a little bent up. The United Kingdom Pavilion will welcome the first attraction inspired by Mary Poppins. You will step into the town Cherry Tree Lane, or I'm sorry, you'll step in time down Cherry Tree Lane, past the Admiral Booms house, then enter number 17 home of the Banks family where your adventure will begin. So this is all going to be redone in the Cherry Tree Lane. So you're gonna have all these beautiful cherry trees through here, and then you're gonna find they're going to retransform this to look exactly like Cherry Tree Lane. And then we're going to walk into the bank's house. Now, what happens beyond that is still a little bit up in the air. Could be literally up in the air if it's Mary Poppins and we might be flying around. Who knows? Or it could be a dark ride or it could be just something that we walk through. Maybe it's just uh, an interactive experience through the bank's house. You know, Mary Poppins could just, uh, you know, be doing her thing through the house. And we'll see all kinds of uh, crazy, magical things happening with inside the bank's house. But I think it's going to be beautiful here. Now, Jack from DSMY came up with a really great idea is that the lamp lighters from uh, Mary Poppins Returns, he said to do maybe just a little five minute skit, 
to where the lamp lighters can come through to the music and light these lamps at night. I think that's, that's a really great idea. I think that would be beautiful. It would be fun to be interactive and a way to enhance it back here. So what they're gonna do, who knows, but this is always where Mary Poppins is back here. It's where you can meet her. Uh, so just really looking forward to this. It's gonna be just a lot of fun. See, Brian, some people are saying that Mary Poppins means that they are taking down the uh, Millennium Pavilion, but I didn't hear them say that Mary Poppins attraction uh, would be that big. Yeah, that's the, that's the thing. We don't know if it's gonna be a full-fledged ride, a dark ride, if it's just going into the bank's house. You know, can they use the existing facades here and just redress them somehow? Um, but yeah, th there's not really a whole lot of space that you can build outwards. You have some backstage area here, but the Skyliner is pretty much behind here. There's a lot of uh, roadway and stuff that gets you around the back the backside of Epcot. So it'll be interesting to see what they do or where they're gonna put it. But it's Disney, they can be creative and they can you know, take down whatever they need to in order to make it happen. See, Lewis, I hope the attraction will include songs to sing to. Yeah, I think it's gonna be totally based around the music. I mean, that's what Mary Poppins is. It's, it's the, the musical score and the soundtrack is what makes Mary Poppins. Um, so yeah, to come back through here and to hear all that music and probably through the whatever journey that you're gonna head through the bank's house, you know, you're gonna have music incorporated in that as well. And that's why uh, Jack's idea with the, the lamp lighting, I think would be very cool as well. I'm assuming he had that, uh, maybe he got that idea from somebody else. I don't wanna steal anybody's thunder, but I just thought it was a cool idea. I liked it when I heard it. Another beautiful butterfly flying around. Hopefully you can see that. Everybody's getting ready for the uh, International Food and Wine Festival. Bathroom. Bathroom stuff. Yeah, they're putting, uh, they're plugging Rocket Man, obviously, for the United Kingdom. The new Rocket Man movie. I have not seen it yet. I would like to see it. I do like Elton John. I actually saw him in concert years ago. It was him and Billy Joel. It was an amazing concert. Saw them together. I did see the uh, the Freddie Mercury movie though. That was really a great movie. How are you? Okay, now we're coming up to Canada. Canada Far and Wide and Circle Vision 360 will debut in January 2020 in the Canadian Pavilion with new scenes and a new story. So Canada far and wide in Circle Vision 360. Yeah, so just a little... Canada is really beautiful. You take the time to go through it. A lot of beautiful uh, flowers and everything. Okay, look at that. We made our way all the way around these countries. Can you believe it? All the way around World Showcase. And now we're gonna head towards what will become World Nature. I didn't say Disney Nature that time, it's World Nature. Now they're talking about the Grand Casino back there, somebody. That sun uh, crept out again. It's really coming down again. Hopefully my camera will stay within a moderate temperature here. 
try to get into some shade as much as possible just so my camera doesn't overheat. August 29th, right around the corner. Wow. International Food and Wine Festival. So they are doing some enhancements back here. They're actually building a whole structure back here. Let me back up a little bit. So this is interesting. I'm not exactly sure what's going to be going in here. Uh, anybody have any ideas? I don't think this would be the uh, the new pavilion that they're talking about. I'm assuming it's going to be further up towards Spaceship Earth. Chris, uh, it would be cool to ride a vehicle that was a carousel horse. Yeah, for Mary Poppins, a lot of people thought it was going to be a carousel going back there, which would have been uh, definitely fitting. But uh, the, uh, having a ride, maybe a dark ride, that you're on a carousel horse of some sort, or you know, carousel horses side by side, that would be kind of neat. You know, you could have the, uh, the two horses with the carriage in back of it. You know when you're a kid and you get on the carousel and all the other kids run, run in front of you and they take all the horses and then you're stuck sitting in the, in the stationary seat? <laughs> Obviously they would have, uh, have those for people who would need them. Probably for me. I don't know if I can get up on that stinking horse. a little better what they're doing over here. This is all just enhancements. They're getting things ready. Hopefully they'll open this up before the uh, Food and Wine Festival, at least this portion and whatever they're building behind there, they can continue to work on. But I'm not 100% sure what that is. Uh, let's see, Carat. Uh, probably a permanent festival merch location. Festival Center is supposed to be inside the monorail loop. Okay, so yeah, the, the new pavilion, the festival pavilion will be inside the monorail loop. And then this, maybe a merch station. That's a good idea. Uh, Lewis, it said, uh, I'd say it's going to be an interactive dark ride. I uh, assume we're still talking about Mary Poppins. Uh, Chuck and Norman both say bathrooms here. That's the first thing that popped into my mind because of the two doors on either side. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's restrooms anywhere close to here. I don't think that there is. I think the closest restrooms are down past um, between UK or right before UK, I think is the closest restroom. So maybe for, yeah, maybe for the festival stuff that's through here, maybe restrooms uh, incorporated with something else through there. Matthew, dead ahead inside the loop is the new festival center. Okay, so we're talking right here on this side. So where are the, uh, the innovations? So they're gonna bring down this innovations building and build that new festival center right there. Is that what we're, is that what we're assuming? Resort budgeting, you think they're widening the pathway? Yeah, you're probably right. Yeah, it does get really cramped through there. It does get bottlenecked up a lot. Elvin thinks it's a bathroom as well. It could be, you know, if they're just widening the path and they're adding some things, maybe they're just gonna add a permanent structure for, you know, more food options through there as well. Maybe a little uh, sit down area. Who knows what it could be. Now, question being, will this change through here? How much will this change? How much of the world celebration will come back all the way to World Showcase here? Now, they do a lot of this at Christmas time. They put up the, the Christmas tree and everything here. 
but will this all become incorporated into the world celebration area behind Epcot? And again, I really could have swore that the Moana attraction was going to be, you know, dead ahead. And by the size of it, it looked like it was going to expand back through here. But um, somebody else said that it was going to be over towards the land and the seas. So not 100% sure on that, but from what I saw, I thought it was going to be directly behind Spaceship Earth here. But again, in no way am I the architect. I saw the same things that everybody else did, and it's just kind of walking through and piecing it together and thinking, you know, this is where this could go. This is what it might look like. Hey, Street Cred, welcome. Uh, my check box is acting weird. Hi, everyone. Happy Monday. Thank you for being here. Loves Disney. Then they will close the other bathrooms that are close by. Yeah, the only ones that I could think of, though, were the ones over... Yeah, there's the bathrooms that's over beyond uh, the Journey to Imagination. And then there's bathrooms that are down uh, towards the UK as well. Hey, he's got baby Groot. Nope. <laughs> Avery, we got the <laughs> Resort budgeting, aren't they closing? the uh, center walkway for the expansion yeah they're, they're definitely going to have to i mean they're going to remove the fountain you know however they're going to extend this back here with whatever they do this is all going to get closed down back here whether they'll do it in sections uh you know they could to start they could just put up fencing around the fountain and they could tear the fountain down and then they can maybe do things in sections i mean you can work your way around either side of the fountain you know they'll close interventions down Club Cool, Mouse Gear is going to get an overhaul. The electric umbrella is going. That's going to get replaced. Um, all of the uh, the uh, photo spot stuff is going to be gone. So is what I'm hearing is that the uh, the festival center is going to be in this area. So it's going to overtake all of the uh, the interventions area here. Hey, Benjamin Haley, thank you so much for the super chat. Enjoy the tours. Thanks again, Rob. You are very, very welcome, my friend. Thank you for being here. Nemo classes, I'm really going to miss the music if it changes. I totally agree. The Epcot music has been a staple of Epcot for many, many years. And it really puts you into that, that state of wonder and imagination and futuristic feelings and everything. So, you know, I'm sure they're gonna change some of it, but this Epcot music, I love it, love it, love it so much. I was really sad when they changed the Spaceship Earth music. We were talking about Jeremy Irons and the original Spaceship Earth music that they had. I guess it wasn't the original, it was the second, uh, second renovation of Spaceship Earth at that point. But even the original Spaceship Earth music, you know, it's those, it's those things that we remember throughout these years. You know, as they change things, you know, I love the changes. I love new music, I love new movies. I love when things change and we get to experience new, new attractions. It's just hard sometimes, you know, when you, you grow up and you become accustomed to the things that you love at Disney, it's hard to see them change. But I guess in order to love Disney, you have to love change. You have to be able to adapt with the changes. You know, as long as they can incorporate a nice mixture of the old into the new, then I think it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be a really fantastic thing. Oh, it feels good under here. Oh, it feels so good under here. You feel the air conditioning coming out of these buildings. 
All right, give me one second here. Carrot, if you want to still hear some of the music, classic music, Utilidor's audio broadcast. Uh, audio broadcasting is a fantastic site. You can definitely find the old music out there. You, know, you can search YouTube and find it all. It's just, uh, you know, listening to it in your car is a lot different than, uh, than experiencing it here at, uh, at Disney World. Jeremy, what do you think of the uh, sight lines they are going to be like with all the new changes? Uh, Spaceship Earth seems to be that it will be blocked from view of the World Showcase. And we talked about that back in World Showcase. Guardians of the Galaxy was a big deal for me because at the time it was just a big eyesore, but they've actually done a really nice job of blending that attraction in. And it's, it really does get sucked up into the, uh, to the Florida sky. So that doesn't bother me so much. Depending on where this festival pavilion goes, it's gonna be a pretty large structure. It'll be tall. But if, uh, if it's gonna be in the area that I'm standing right now, it'll be over enough that it won't interfere with that direct on sight line of Spaceship Earth. I don't think they're ever going to, to distract from that direct sight line. You know, everything will be to the left and right, just like the pavilions are now. You see, you know, hall structures, but they, they encompass Spaceship Earth. They're not directly in front of it. So I don't see anything that would, uh, would change that. You're gonna have things that'll enhance it on either side, but you're not gonna have anything that'll obstruct the actual view. And you know, one of the big things they said at D23, I think Bob Chapek kept saying it, is that they listened to their guests. You know, they took a lot of, uh, a lot of advice from their guests. They talked to them and they said, what do you want to see? You know, what would make you happen, happy coming to these parks? So, you know, hopefully they got an overwhelming feedback and they took the, hopefully the most popular things. You know, would a, would a roller coaster in place of Ellen been my most popular thing? No, but you know, majority of people love those kind of attractions. I love the Guardians. Um, you know, there's, there's things that I love and things that I don't. The Walt Disney statue, I think, is amazing. Uh, the stuff that's happening back in uh, France, I think, is great. The Mary Poppins attraction, I think, is beautiful. So I think they listen to a broad range of people, and they're trying to incorporate a broad range of entertainment through here, which, which in the long run is going to be, you know, a very good thing. So one thing that I was really shocked about is that they did not mention anything about Journey into Imagination. I really thought that we were going to get uh, a little bit of an overhaul back here. I thought they had a picture, or they had this wall, where they had all the posters of all the attractions in all the countries that ever existed or currently exist here at Epcot. And there was two blank spaces there. So my thought was one of those spaces was going to be a country, which was going to be Brazil, and the other blank space would have been the... Uh, a change to Journey into Imagination. But those spaces really, I don't see how those spaces got filled because no major new attraction, I guess Mary Poppins, you would consider as being one of those attractions. And I don't know what the other one, I mean, I wouldn't consider the, the new Circle Vision 3D movies as attractions. Uh, so Mary Poppins could fill one, but I don't know what the other major thing would be that's gonna fill that attraction, unless it's the Space 220 Yeah, I, Journey into Imagination is in serious need of uh, some updating. I love the Dreamfinder. I don't think I'm alone with that. I'm trying to find my, uh, my World Nature spot here so we can read a little bit about that. Uh, but I hope we do, definitely do not lose Figment. Okay, World Nature. World Nature is dedicated to the understanding and preserving the beauty, awe, and balance of the natural world. Uh, it will include the land and the seas with Nemo and Friends pavilions. Uh, journey of water inspired by Moana. Okay, there you go. <laughs> I guess I just answered my own question. For here I thought it was going to be totally in world celebration behind uh, Spaceship Earth, but in reading this, uh, I just answered my own question. So I forget who it was on here who was telling me that, but uh, you were absolutely right. I should have listened. Sorry about that. Uh, will be the first experience inspired by the hit Walt Disney Animation Studios film. This lush exploration trail will invite you to meet, let me turn my page here, invite you to meet and play with magical living water. The water will have its own, uh, have a life of its own, just like Moana's friend, the ocean. And you'll learn about the importance of the natural water cycle. The Lance Pavilion uh, will feature a new film called Awesome Planet. Which, will showcase, uh, which showcases the beauty, diversity, and dynamic story of the planet. This will debut in January of 2020. Okay, so 
So I guess I should have read this a little more clearly before we walked here, but this is what live video is all about. So Moana is actually going to go back here. So maybe this area back here is going to all be Moana. Um, so that might have answered my, my poster question as well. So maybe Moana and Mary Poppins are the two attractions that are going to fill those two poster holes on the wall. So hey, we all figure it out in the end. We work together and we come to a conclusion here. That's why we do these. We walk through here and we figure it all out, where it's going to be, how it's going to happen, and uh, get everybody's opinions. So, Philip, uh, late joining, but hearing the entrance music in this video reminds me uh, that I will be sad if and when the entrance music loop goes away. I will be too. We were talking about that. I really love the Epcot music and it'd be sad to see it go if it actually does. The BOMO, we're going to turn lush and not so much concrete, so that would be a good good thing through here. Nemo of glasses, Phil, Philip, uh, yeah, we're just saying how sad it would be. Yeah, talking about the, uh, the music. That crazy guy, the new pavilion was uh, the other major announcement. Okay, so I guess, yeah, the pavilion, I guess you can call that an attraction that could fill that poster. Mary Poppins, Moana, I guess you can just choose whatever you want to put in those posters. I guess I just really had it set in my mind that the new country was going to happen, Brazil, and I guess in my mind I was really hoping for Journey into Imagination, so maybe, you know, I just forcefully blocked it all out of my mind, all the other things to take into consideration, so it's good to have these conversations so we can open each other's minds and, and figure this out together. Resort budgeting, living with the land is my most favorite ride in the entire resort. Uh, I would agree. That's a beautiful ride through there. It's it's like 40 minutes long, I think. It's 30 minutes long. And there's some beautiful scenery through there. You can see where they grow a lot of the food that they actually serve in the uh, in the land pavilion. Uh, so yeah, really great ride. Uh, Matthew, imagination will be in celebration then. Uh, let's see, kind of odd, but celebrating, but celebrating imagination tied to Walt's imagination, I guess. Uh, that seems kind of broken up to me. I'm not totally sure what you're trying to say, but something with the imagination pavilion. Uh, let's see here. Eb Scott, uh, I have to admit the lack of rides, attractions in Galaxy's Edge is why I didn't enjoy it very much. I love the theme, uh, detail put into it, but it wasn't uh, the draw that I expected, was ready to go to R&R &R and to uh, TOT. Sometimes I gotta think about what these uh, abbreviations are. Um, yeah, I mean, there's as of right now, you have Smuggler's Run inside Star Wars, which again, I, I thoroughly enjoyed. Uh, is it the most you know, innovative ride out there? No, but it's, it's very entertaining and it puts you into a situation to where something that you've dreamed about all your life, about being on the Millennium Falcon, is awesome to me. Uh, the Rise of the Resistance is supposedly going to be a huge game changer as far as rides are concerned. So can't wait for that to open. But it's just the overall experience of Galaxy's Edge. It's encompassing. You cannot see the outside world. And it truly made me feel like I was completely in that Star Wars universe. I was on the planet Batu. The, the real world did not exist around me. I felt encompassed by the characters in there, the, the, the cast members, the costuming, seeing Chewie and Rey and everybody walking around was just really fantastic. The ships, the Millennium Falcon, is just knocks you on your rear end, and it's so much fun. Uh, so I had a great time. You know, it's, it's about everybody's opinion, though. You know, you either love it or you hate it, or it's just something you can tolerate. But personally, I really did enjoy it. Chris, Mary Poppins and uh, Celebration, where the posters, Moana, and the restaurant already had posters as well. Okay, so Mary Poppins and uh, the Celebration, the pavilion, I guess we're talking about, are the, uh, were the two posters added. The Bomo, okay, where would Brazil have uh, gone? Not really, okay, what would Brazil have? They're not really famous for anything. Uh, off the top of my head, I don't know exactly what they're famous for. I just know it's a, it's a beautiful country. There's a ton of people that come here. I would have to, you know, research a little bit more to see what you know, the actual architecture of Brazil. Um, am I, th I don't think I'm thinking of uh, Brazil. I don't think Rio is Brazil. I don't want to sound stupid here and not know my geography. But where is the, uh, the picture of the mountain where they have, uh, you know, the statue of Jesus overlooking the mountain? Um, 
I want to say that's Rio, but I don't know if that's Brazil or not. I'm going to stop talking now because I'm really making myself sound kind of illiterate, probably. Bill, you can't celebrate Brazil while they burn down the rainforest. Yeah, that's what people are saying is that they held back because of the things that are going on there. Resort budgeting, do you think that after the changes, will uh, World Showcase uh, open at the same time as the other world? Uh, I think they're going to try to get most of it open at the same time. Hopefully, I don't know if they're going to get this done before the 50th anniversary. This is going to be a multi-year transformation through here. It's not going to be, you know, by this date, everything's going to be done. I think it's going to be done in phases uh, until it's all finally completed. Uh, so we'll just have to wait and see. But, uh, yeah, I think this, uh, this pretty much covers it. That's everything that's going to happen. We covered all four of the new areas that are going to be back here, um, all the new changes that are coming. Uh, I'm really actually excited about it. I think it's going to be beautiful. Uh, nothing that truly disappointed me. Um, would I have wanted to see some other things happen in here, of course, but the changes that they're going to make, I think, will enhance Epcot. I think it'll make it a more beautiful place to come. Um, I, I like that they're going to incorporate at least some of the, the ideals of Epcot with the IP properties that they're bringing in. We'll see how it all turns out at the end. But, um, you know, overall, I'm happy with it. We'll, we'll keep an eye on it as we go through. We'll watch the things happen, construction updates and things like that. Uh, so I'm really happy that you guys, you know, shared this with me. I really had a great time. And hang on a second here. Let me say my goodbyes here. Again, uh, thank you, I appreciate it. Um, thank you so much for the super chats. That's always appreciated. It really helps to uh, keep things going here. And if you guys have any questions, please leave them down in the comments. I will try to go back and answer them as best as I can. Uh, if, you know, as things happen through here, we'll try to answer more questions as I see things happening. Um, you know, once they start tearing things down and once they start building things, we'll have a, have a lot of fun watching it. Uh, definitely uh, the, the Skyliner, I'm gonna have a, a meetup for the Skyliner on uh, September 29th at 2 p.m. Uh, right in front of the Hollywood Studio Station. If you want to come, just have a great ride on it. I'm going to jump on it and ride, and if you guys want to follow along, that would be uh, just a total huge thrill. So uh, other than that, uh, visit PassportsAndParks.com. Subscribe here on YouTube. Hit that uh, bell icon. It's always appreciated so you can follow everything that's happening. And until the next time, you guys have a great day, and I will talk to you very, very soon. Bye-bye.